Finally, the mask has come back for more Thunder action. That's right. It's NTWL Thunder episode 15, and I got my own nickname now. Self-proclaimed, of course. Anyways, we're kicking things off with RTM of the RT Comics, taking on Spike Spiegel, the Space Cowboy. You might remember Spike Spiegel from episode of against Alphine and Daniel Bryan. Alphine will be in the later set tonight, taking on Superman. The two people who will not be here tonight are Mario and Luigi, the Mario Brothers, the new Nintendo World Order. As General Manager Shigeru Miyamoto has suspended them indefinitely for attacking Andy Mo Davis and injuring Shaquille O'Neal. And anyways, vicious strikes like that, and a vicious headlock, and a side backbreaker by Spike Spiegel! And a headbutt not connecting, and knocked into the corner, and vicious punches by Spike Spiegel, and an arm breaker by, and an elbow smash by Archie, and a vicious clothesline. Whips him across the ropes and a vicious knee smash. A banging his head into the canvas. Bang bang! <laughs> then whips him across the ropes again and throwing him over his head. And there's the elbow drop. Anyways, this episode is the is the fifteenth episode. And like I said, we got a huge man. Oh! A vicious kick in the crotch. And he went for the diving moonsault, but he couldn't get him. Anyways, Archie trying for a belly to belly suplex, but he couldn't do it. And look at this. Archie, a nice ankle breaker. And thrown outside the ring, another fighting outside the ring, and a vicious headbutt by Spike Spiegel. Now he's got the single leg Boston Crab on him. And look at this. Oh, hits him in the back of the head. And he's the single leg Boston Crab again. For some, looking for something. It's a bouquet of roses. Ah, oh, maybe after. He, and Artie steals the roses. Maybe he could use them for Veronica or Betty or whoever he is. And he throws them at him. And an elbow drop. Bang bang. <laughs> Bing. Okay, that's enough. It's Spike Spiegel getting a little overconfident, and he steps on the roses, and he hits him with the roses, and he hits him with the roses again. Oh, wait a minute. He's got a, He's got that claw. He's got that. A, a Mr. Socko again. It looks like he's gonna do it. Oh, reverse DDT right on the roses. And the day shoving the, the mandible claw, the mandible claw. He's got the mandible claw locked in. And he's trying to choke him out. Oh, that's just disgusting. You wouldn't expect a space tower do something like that, but he's Spike Spiegel, apparently he can do what he wants, but bang bang, and then he gets up, and 
vicious strikes. And he goes behind. There's the backbreaker. He knocks him down with one punch. Arch Archie knocks him down with one punch. Backs him onto the apron in. Into the, into the corner. He goes up top looking for a big move. Oh, nice elbow drop. Big run. Oh no, he's got the steel steps. He goes back in the ring. Oh, look at this. Hitting him with the steel steps. Look at this. He spins off the ropes. And now vicious stomps and punches and kicks. And foot choke. He chokes him into the ropes. Into the corner. <coughs> now wait a minute. He's seriously not going to use that sock again. Oh, there's the DDT. And there's one, one two, two, three. three. It spikes people, defeats RT Andrews in our opening contest. And anyway, next up we got to get a huge match of Patrick's Basin. Well, anyways, we got Bazooka Joe coming back from his recent injury at the hands of Evil Ryu. And he'll be taking on the American psycho, Patrick Bateman. Uh, Ryu? 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm just going to pronounce it Ryu. Because that's how I've always pronounced it. Anyways, here comes that bubblegum boy. I can tell by the looks of things that Bazooka Joe isn't looking forward to this match one bit. Wait, what's this? But Patrick Bateman's coming out to S -S Studio by Bill Collins? Uh, okay. Anyways, the match begins and Vicious strikes by Patrick Bateman. Oh! A pa a Bazooka Joe actually getting a punch in. The vicious strikes by American Psycho. But Bazooka Joe not flinching. Not even getting hit. But all oh, those knee bashes by Patrick Bateman. And he gets thrown outside the ring! Bazooka Joe surprisingly holding his own against the debuting Patrick Bateman and oh snap suplex! Anyways, a vicious clothesline, oh knocked against the ropes and knocked outside the ring! And look at this, now he's just fighting his time, and oh, crossbody not connecting! And Bazooka Joe! He's getting clothesline, and brutally knocked into the steel steps. Ah, oh, vicious shots with that steel steps! The American Psycho showing his brutal tendencies. As he gets thrown back into the ring by Bazooka Joe, the devastating back kick ripped across the ropes. Ah, oh, pancake slam! <coughs> <coughs> and now a spin wheel kick onto Bazooka Joe. And there's that Hogan move, the Hogan move again. Uh oh. Now he's getting a weapon, it's a beer can! A beer can! Oh, Bazooka Joe gets beaten with a beer can! And he switches the beer can with a baseball bat! I think Bazooka Joe plays baseball? I think he does. He gets baseball cards, bubblegum, 
Can you stick a bubble gum in him? Oh! Which reminds me of a time he killed Paul Allen with an axe! By the way, I just recently saw American Psycho for the first time. Oh, knocks him down again! Glorious piece of film, but the ending didn't make any sense to me. Uh oh, looks like he's going for a big move, and it's a tornado DDT! I really like this. I'm really looking forward to see what Patrick Bateman can do here. I mean, after he's done with this guy. Oh no, he's dragging him in. Power bomb and another power bomb. Oh no! What's he gonna do now? He's gonna throw him outside the ring and a moonsault. No, oh, but he gets the knees up. And look at this! Look at this! Anyways, they're grappling outside the ring and he whips him across him. Into the, into the stadium, the Stay Stay Stadium. <laughs> We're on the ramp right now, and wait a minute, where are we going? Where are we going? All right, we're we're in the backstage lot. We're in the hall. There are a lot of weapons and. But we're going back live. And now we're going back into the hall. Back into the hall. I mean, this fight began in the ring. I know he's got a hammer. He's got a sledgehammer. Oh, he's... Looks like he's going to hit him with the hammer. He hit. He tries to hit him with the hammer. He can't hit him with the hammer. Oh, no, he's going to whip him. Put them back into the ramp. Oh, and knee bashes. And knee bashes by Patrick Bateman, the American Psycho. As he picks him up and he whips him back into the arena. Knocks him down. Looks like he's got. He's got the rock sign! He's got another beer can! He's just with a... With a... Title belt! Title belt! He's got a title belt! Who leaves all these weapons around? Seriously! It should be under the ring! <laughs> and knocks him into the barricade! Oh, he's not gonna whip him back into the ramp again! Yes, he is! We're back in the ramp! Oh no, we're back in the hall! Yes, we are back in the hall! This fight began in the ring, and now we're in the backstage area. Now we're backstage. Wait a minute. We're into the wall of the hall! And I do not like this, don't like this. He whipped him the wall, the wall, the hall, and I do not like this, don't like this at all! Okay. And now they're taunting each other. Oh, this fight began in the ring, but now it's ending up all the way back in the parking lot! All the way back in the parking lot, and somehow nobody's cars are here. I mean, this must 
be Miyamoto's parking lot because he only has one car. I mean, why are there not so many cars here? There's a water bottle and a fire extinguisher. And we're going, it looks like we're trying, gonna be going back here. And look at this. And look at this. Oh no. What's he thinking? He's standing right by the car. Oh no, he's gonna try and move into the car. Oh, he takes him down. Leg lock. The fight's broken out in the parking lot. This is a real parking lot brawl. This is the first time we've gone this far backstage without it glitching up in a scoop slam. There's the takedown. If you remember episode 11, Trini and Buffy went backstage and, it, and the bell rang. These guys are just doing whatever he wants. I guess because they know the Patrick Bateman psycho and can stab at any minute. They've all oh, Harlem flip right onto the fire extinguisher in the bottle of water. Look at this. And Hogan moved right onto his leg. And look at this, we're walking up behind Bryce, and a vertical soup standing! Wait a minute, what's he doing? Why is it he just go for the move of the vertical suplex? Right onto the steel floor! And now viciously punching the inside of his skull! Maybe I was wrong, maybe he is a member of the No DQ World Order. I'm not sure, but maybe he is, maybe he isn't, I don't know. Or maybe he's a member of the Ministry of Darkness. Maybe they're both of bad guys. Maybe they're both evil. Maybe Shaq was. Maybe I was right about Shaq trying to save us, but maybe I was wrong about, maybe I was also right about the Ministry of Darkness being evil. In fact, I think I was right about the Ministry of Darkness being evil. Anyways. I've also noticed that Batman hasn't been seen since he lost the title. Well, except for episode 13, but... Where is Batman? Where is Batman? For the record, where's our champion? Anyways, we can't draw on that now. This is only a one-hour show. Anyways, Patrick Bateman with a, a two-by-four. Oh, he's going psycho on this guy. Another Hogan move. He trips him, he trips him. He drops him, he drops him. And look at this. And look at this, look at this. And look at this, another scoop slam. And look at this, he's got a fire extinguisher. He keeps hitting him with the fire extinguisher. He's gonna make him bleed, I know. And he steals the fire extinguisher! Vicious headbutts! I think they're headbutts! Or shoulder breakers! A uh, single leg Boston Crab! And look at this! And now Bateman! I mean, Bazooka Joe's got the fire extinguisher. Miss, and he's punching him again severely. He won't be chewing any more gum. 
for a while. He keeps doing that to his teeth. He look. It looks like he's trying to break his jaw so he can't chew any more gum. I think that's exactly what he's trying to do. Look at him. He's clenching his jaw. I think it's broken. Oh, brother. Oh, check out the carnage. Standing vertical suplex right on the fire extinguisher. Only two punches that time. Oh no. And it finally goes with a small package, but it broke up almost immediately. I don't think he was trying to go for that move. Maybe he wasn't trying to go for that move. And a neck breaker. I'm surprised that. The Bazooka Joe is still standing. This is the longest match he's had. If you remember correctly, he's been injured by both Bane and Evil Ryu. And the ankle drop. I think Patrick Bateman is taking his sweet time. Just like he does with all his victims. But wait a minute. And a schoolboy, but... That gets breaking up too! What is this? What is this? Oh no! He just knocked him into the ropes! And... And then when... Oh no! Blood! Blood! Oh no! Patrick Bateman's bleeding! This isn't good for either of these competitors! It's not good for Patrick Bateman because he's... Because he's hurt bad. It's not good for Bazooka Joe. Because he's even more aggressive than he already is. Oh no, the scoop slam. Oh no. He's got the fire extinguisher. He's gonna... Run, Bazooka Joe, run. Don't let him beat you. Knee bashes, knee bashes to the head. Not only is this the longest match that Bazooka Joe's had, this is the longest match I've commentated. And this is the most. Wait a minute, the. Ah! Pedigree backbreaker! Oh no, he's going for another pedigree backbreaker! He's... Oh, good God almighty! Wait a minute. A pile driver! A uh, reverse pile driver! And he's still standing up! A roundhouse kick! And look at this. The good God almighty! Stomping him into the ground and trying to break his jaw again! Vicious kicks to the foot. What are those gonna do? Uh oh. Ah, oh, nothing. And there's that Hogan move. And look at this. He counters that. Oh no, whips him into the rope, into the truck, and throws that fire extinguisher at him. Uh -oh. oh, he dragged him out of the truck. Oh, and then he throws him onto the truck. What's he gonna do? He's gonna keep punching him! He's gonna keep punching him onto the truck! Oh, no. oh, oh, pile driver! That's gotta be it! 
One, two, three. That's it. Patrick Bateman is one. Good God Almighty. That must have killed him. And God is my witness. Bazooka Joe is broken in half. Patrick Bateman. What a dominant force this guy's gonna be. I've been looking forward to this tag team match all week. Justin Timberlake and Lance Bass of NSYNC taking on Marilyn Manson and the Slender Man, more commonly known as the Brood. Anyways, it's time for me to warm up my vocal cords. It's tearing up my heart when you when we are Anyways, Justin Timberlake coming out to the ring, and he'll be followed up by Liz Bass, the gay one. Okay. Anyways, J.C. Chazé was always my favorite member, but Justin Timberlake has always been a close second. The other two, Chris Kirkpatrick and Joey Fatone, but I'm sure they're watching. And I'm sure they're not going to be looking forward to seeing Jeep, the crew, Marilyn Manson, and the Slender Man. They've established themselves as a dominant force in previous colleagues. It's not going to be easy for NSYNC to be gone. This is a tag team match, a tornado style tag team match, and a vicious atomic drop by the Slender Man. And Vance Bass throwing Slender Man outside the ring. And Justin Timberlake throwing Marilyn Manson outside the ring. And they're dancing and having a great time. See, that's what I love about old 90s boy bands. They didn't care what anybody thought. All these new boy bands were just, um, just bogus, you know, and... Ah, oh, hard backbreaker by Slender Man! And the Slender Man trying for a big boot, but he dodges. Oh, a nice headbutt! Anyways, Justin Timberlake of the Mickey Mouse Club, and it's... Flips him over his head. And look at this. Vicious strikes. Anyways, I know it's not going to be a hard, it's going to be a hard fought battle. Marilyn Manson, the guy who did the cover for, the cover theme for Smackdown. Looks like he's going to And look at this. Goes behind. Ah, nice spine buster by JT! Marilyn Manson whips him across the ropes! Ah, oh, Harlem flip! Or Transylvanian flip! Ah, uh, the blood! Blood! Oh no, blood! And it misses the blue! That means when the brood is near, there's a bloodbath to fear! This match could be over anytime soon. Wait, no, there's a small package, but he couldn't even get the one count. I have a feeling that if, that if someone pins Lance, it's all over. And Justin gets thrown outside the ring. And look at this. Look at this scoop slam. And the, the, the drop. Oh no. Marilyn Manson with the choke slam. Oh 
Bravo away from Hal. And look at this. Power bomb. That's it. That is it. The Brood is going to. The Brood establishing himself as a dominant force already. And uh oh. Dead man walking. Oh. This guy. Oh, Marilyn Manson is very dominant force here. China. Oh, super elbow drop. Meanwhile, inside the ring, JT and the Slender Man. All right. Oh, wait a, a break of the eyes. The fans are on their feet for episode number 15. A huge milestone for Nick Gemini. And oh no, a vertical suplex by Marilyn Manson. And look at this. A hard power slam by Marilyn Manson. Dominant force. Dropping a power bomb right onto the steel steps. Why don't they just go for the pinfall right there? Are they? Are they part of the? A oh, double pile driver by the brood. Are the brood allies of the Ministry of Darkness? We can never be too sure. As to throw JT outside the ring. We can never be too sure as Marilyn Manson took on a double pile driver by NSYNC. These guys are dominant, a very dominant force so far. I can tell right now. Oh, this is Scoop Slam. Oh, cross body dive outside the ring. Neck breaker, way neck breaker. Wait a minute, where are they going? Where are they going? And now they're at the ramp. And Sunderman dragging him back outside the ring. And he wants to finish this inside the ring. One, two, no! JT and, and he's got a ring bell and he hits him with the ring bell. I thought that was a disgrace. I thought that was the end of the match. But the game show count two. And then a man's pass. Oh, what a drop kick. Look at this. This is, gonna, this is definitely a one-sided match. Kind of one-sided if you really think about it. But if you really think about it, are the brood allies of the Ministry of Darkness or are they on their own? We can only tell, only time can tell as the as the brood gets one against the one, but Lance back able to kick the break up the pin. With the double axe handle, the way he kicks him up. Oh no, he gets thrown outside. Oh, whipped into the corner. Oh, vicious tackle. As JT gets knocked outside the ring. That's it. Slender Man with the back of Adam Slash. His way. Oh no. The Slender Choke. The Slender Choke.
our fourth match as Jessica Nigrai uh, uh, I have no idea how to pronounce that takes on Harley Quinn of the Batman comics more new kids on the block okay I can't help it. Both me and my girlfriend have ADHD. We're suckers for old school 90s and 2000s music. Especially boy bands and anything that was on MTV back in the day. And here comes Harley Quinn coming up to Hoku's Snow Day thing. The song that was in Snow Day as the two divas Wear off. Ah, pushes her down. Harley pushes her down. Slap in the face. Vicious strikes. And whipped across the ropes. Ah, arm toss. Trying to count her own pin, but there's no pin. There's no pin to count. Ah, slap in the face. A modified leg drop. Oh, back scratch by Jessica Nygav. I'm just gonna call her the cosplay queen because that's what she is. She's a cosplay queen. Uh, she she won the award for her sexy Pikachu. Oh. That's all I remember about her. A devastating neck breaker, and she's counting her pin again. Harley Quinn, apparently the new new 52 version. Ah, oh, punch in the groin. And whipped into the corner. Ah, oh, big boot. Moved by Jesse. Ah, oh, knocked her down. Look at that. Oh, elbow to the back of the head by Jessica. To just back of the head of Jessica by Harley. Ah, oh, slap to the face. Oh, figure four leg lock. Outside the ring. Look at this. This is strikes. Oh, there we go. Punches to the face. Not connecting though. Oh, look at this. 
Sky a full Nelson. She gets out. And look at this. Oh, nice top rope dragon screw. That's a move we haven't seen before. Look at this. And then, I gotta tell you, the hockey games have some great moves. Great, great attacks. Look at this. And now Harley Quinn throwing weapons into the ring. I gotta try, I'm gonna hand it to Harley. She's she's hard cool like her pudding. Looks like her dear old Mr. J. She knows. She knows how to get what she wants. And oh! Jessica finally showing some aggressiveness in this battle. Anyways, now Harley standing on the table and she jumps off the table. Now if they were both on the table, that would be a bad thing. A win for either of these competitors would definitely put them in contention for the Week 5 Trainers title. Again, I want to stick to the record that we are live from Toronto, Canada. Actually, we're live from Atlanta, Georgia, the home of Cartoon Network headquarters. Fantastic, if you ask me. We might see some cool tunes show up. We might not. We don't know what could happen. Anything could happen here on NCWL Thunder. 
And now it's time for our main event, the Man of Steel, Superman, taking on the leader of the Ministry of Darkness, Alucard, Tony Chimmel, if you will. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Metropolis, weighing 281 pounds, he is the Man of Steel, Superman! And from the other side of hell, weighing in at 265 pounds, Alucard! Alucard now has a cool robe, and they size each other up, and Superman begins by throwing him outside the ring! Devastating strikes! Look at this! An arm breaker! Oh, Superman dropped a hard scoop slam, but it, he falls over because of Superman's Great strength and power. Superman is the man of steel. I wonder how he got that nickname. As he gets beat with a big boot. Anyways, I wonder how Superman got that nickname, the man of steel. He takes him down. Oh no. A vicious kick by Alucard. The son of Dracula and the son of Krypton. Duking it out for dominance as he prays to his greater power. As Alucard prays to his greater power. We never did find out who that player guy was. Perhaps we'll find out soon as a Superman punch, knocking him down. And vicious strikes by Alucard. And Alucard knocking him into the corner and going for something big in the double axe handle. Oh, that. Arm breaker, bulldog, a big boot to the face, and an elbow drop. And more elbow drops. Oh no, Alucard with a, a, a two by four, and he gets taken out. And Superman does not believe in violence. Right here and now, 
But Superman gets up. Oh no, Alucard, Alucard. Oh no, Alucard's gonna break the table with Superman. Oh no. It's the, he's got the last right through the table. Oh my god! And Bray with a sacrifice, and there's a knockout. That's it! Alucard has knocked out Superman. Here is your winner, Alucard! Alucard wins the match by knockout. Wait a minute, we're going backstage now? Apparently, we're going backstage because there's more tension backstage right now. And, wait a minute, it, there's, there's Ben, John, and Lincoln. Oh, wait a minute, is that who I think it is? about them earlier and I talked about them in a previous episode and uh, while well, referencing the, the ultimate evil and destroy us all and, and and now they're attacking the Ministry of Darkness but but why are they attacking the Ministry of Darkness it, Apparently, they're tired of, of what's going on here. I have no idea what's going on. And, and now they're going into the boiler room. And now we're in the boiler room and Billy and Mandy. And now we're out of the boiler room. And look at this. And now we're... Right in the locker room, and Billy and Mandy. And they're attacking Dark Link and Ben Drown. Apparently, attempting to get some revenge for all the souls that. Dark Link and Ben Drown have, have captured. They want none of this. They don't want any of the. They're tired of this crap. And I'm not really sure what to say about this, but I mean, if anybody can take out these guys. Um, if any guy can take out the Ministry of Darkness, hopefully the Billy and Mandy can. But out of all these people, I mean, we knew that the Cartoon Network people would have some effect on Cartoon Network, would have some effect, but. Well, we didn't think that they would come out and attack the Ministry of Darkness. But if the Ministry of Darkness wants a war against the NCWL, they want to try and destroy us all, then at least we know we have people that are going to try and stop them from taking over. I mean... We're dealing with two weavers from two different sides of a war. It's good to know that we have soldiers on the front line, like Billy and Mandy, even though they just got here. And wait a minute, Billy, knocking him up, knocking Darkwing off the table with a double axe handle. Takes him down with an angle breaker. And now he's got that steel chair. Uh oh. 
Ben driving a schoolboy. One, One two. two. Wait, this isn't a pinfall, but this isn't a pinfall match. This is a wait. This is a match or wait? Okay, apparently they want a match. They got a match. Okay, if they want a match, they got a match. Apparently we're having a unsanctioned backstage tag team brawl here. As we go back into the hall, we're having a brawl in the hall. Getting attacked by the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. I mean, these guys want a war. They're gonna get it. We're dealing with two evils here. And it's good to know that we have soldiers, people that are going to help us in this battle. One, two, three! But the Ministry of Darkness defeat Billy and Mandy in this unsanctioned battle. And anyways, the Ministry of Darkness is 2-0 tonight. And thank you for joining me, Matt Giannotti, episode 15, You've Been Thunderstruck.